the second book in the Grishaverse trilogy. Hello fellow bookquesters, it is I, Aaron the Bookquester, and today I got this great book, Siege and Storm, book 2 of the trilogy, and well, let's get right on to it. So, I think I did the last book, Shadow and Bone, actually a couple months ago, and book 2 wasn't in the library, then I sort of forgot about the series, then I realised I should pick this back up. So I found this book on my under Kindle store, bought it, and here we are. Maul and Alina. Alina in the last book discovered her powers as the Sun Summoner. A Grisha, a Grisha is a sort of magic, a sort of person who can manipulate things on a molecular level. Basically, she is a Grisha, the only Grisha who can, who can summon sunlight. And therefore, that means that she has the power to destroy the Fold. A huge dark area that has been created by the Black Heretic, or the Darkling, that changed the area and its people into a monstrous terrain. And Alina has the power to destroy the fold. Her light, well, is very, very powerful, all in all. And meanwhile, Mal and Alina are running because Darkling wants to use Alina for his own good. He wants to use Alina as a sort of shield as he controls the fold. He, because he, because uh, if, if the fold could be controlled, it is quite literally the greatest weapon on the planet because if you if that country disagrees just push the fold there and kill them all if this part agrees now alina can make a price again so dark the darkling last bug gets the stag a modest and combines with alina and alina well, she becomes under the Darkling's control, however, manages to escape, and that's where we are now. So, Mal and Alina are running, running, running. They have rowed a ship, and now they are at the other side. They have gone to a different country, and they think they're safe. However, the Darkling managed to catch up to them, and they are captured once again and Sturmhund, a infamous privateer, rides the ship is the Darkling rents a ship from the Sturmhund, who is an infamous privateer or a pirate. And they are tied within the Sturmhund's ship, and together they are taken away. On a whaler, to, towards this random area, to the, to the true sea, why are they going there? Because the Darkling wants to get the second M Flyfire of Merzost. And that is the Ice Dragon, or as it is called, the Rusalon. It is an Ice Dragon who lives in the depths of the ocean. And it scales as the second part of the amplifiers that Alina wants Alina wants to be uh, the Darkling wants to collect on Alina for her to reach her extreme true potential. Now, okay, so Here's what's happening. And so, after days of searching, they managed to find a Rusalai, and the privateers help capture it. However, the Darkling. However, the Darkling is met up with something he does not expect. The Sturmhaunt betrays the Darkling, takes Maul and Elena, takes the Serpent, and runs away. The Darkling, oh, it is found out, has newfound power since he had since he has ran away from the fold. He can summon and create shadow creatures. These shadow creatures, of course, have to stay close to him in order for him to control them. However, they are pretty much indestructible and very, very hard to kill. And so, so Sturmhunt says that I swear, solemnly swear, that Mole, you, and Elena, you, I will let you guys escape. I will let you go if you don't like the offer that my client offers you back in Ravka. So together, they go to Ravka, and then they cross the fold, using a newfound technology that the Sturmhand has created, riding a plane. And they still they go, and they still they land at the other side of the fold, and there they are met, and the Sturmhand takes off his disguise. For he is Nikolai Lanshov, the second prince of Ravka, a commander of the army, and one of 
the heirs to the throne. And he says, welcome back. And the soldiers welcome him back. And together they go to the capital. There, Alina demands control of the second army. The army of Grisha that the Darkling formerly had control of. And so Alina trains the second army for a war. A war that the Darkling was sure to bring to them. And meanwhile, meanwhile, the Sturmhund or Nikolai Rolantsov is trying his best to become the heir of the throne, even though he's second son. However, Vasily Lansov, who is the first son, well, he's an idiot, but he really, really wants the throne. And yeah, and so on, and there's a drama and blah, blah, blah. And then Vasily, in order to get a good favor for, for his dad, you know, for him to become the next king, he goes ahead and makes makes a makes a trade. He makes an alliance with Fiedens. The Fiedens are Ravka's sworn enemies. However, for this threat, for the Darkling, um, they thought it might be a good idea to ally. And Vasily does this. And in exchange, the Fiedens want some access to a couple harbors, a couple ports, and a couple roads, which Vasily okays. However, Vasily is an idiot. Nikolai stands up and he goes. Ladies and gentlemen, evacuate the facilities immediately. Vasily Lantzov was an idiot, for he gave access to roads, a direct path to the capital of Ravka. A direct path, which was heavily guarded by scouts and spies, was now blown wide open by the Fiedens, for the Fiedens weren't allying with Ravka. They were allying with the Darkling, and the Darkling now had a clear path through into Ravka, into the heart of the city to kill them all. And as if on cue, the dark God Bargin, the Darkling shadow monsters appear, and Darkling Grisha appear, and it's absolute chaos. Alina runs to the second army and they grab a cannon, a light cannon thing that amplifies Alina's powers and they use it. However, there's just too many shadow monsters. And finally, the Darkling reaches them and Alina says, okay, fine, guys run. And she basically gives herself up to the Darkling. However, she does not, she is not without a plan. And she kisses the Darkling and says, you are mine, you my power is yours, the Darkling's please. However, that also means that the Darkling's power is Alina's. And, and of course, the Darkling, every time he creates these weird shadow monsters, he seems to tire, he seems to kill a little bit of something that's inside him. So what Alina does, he connects with, she connects with the Darkling and says, and your power is mine. And uses the Darkling's power in order to create more and more shadow monsters, draining him, killing him. However, Mal doesn't allow her to kill herself because in that situation they both die. So Mal came in and takes Alina away. And the Darkling is exhausted and he retreats as well. And finally, Alina loses consciousness. When she wakes up, she finds herself in a citadel, in an underground citadel. And the apparat had apparently created a sort of cult army for her. And now they were all waiting for her to wake. Then she wakes up and she tries to summon the sun, but she can't. It seems that her power has been completely drained from her. Or perhaps she's just too far underground, who knows. And that is the end of the book of Siege and Storm. And of course, I will read the third book very, very shortly. However, I have quite a pile of books that I want to read that I have bought recently. So look out for those reviews. And definitely, I really, really enjoyed this book. It was really, really well paced. It was definitely longer than the first book, Shadow and Bone. However, same pacing, same tension. It was absolutely awesome. And like always, your book quester, Aaron the Book Quester, great book, guys. I would definitely recommend for you all to read it. A good old fantasy book, and definitely I would recommend you The Grishaverse. Welcome. Mm -hmm.